pociągi intensywne orzeszkowe do stacji Lenia przez stację Um, it's crazy early in the morning and I figure I'll go for a walk and find a coffee or some Polish type of bakery item. Walk and talk, walk and talk. What I found interesting about going to Learning 2.0 this time around was seeing people I used to work with and their Learning 2 leaders and they're very active on Twitter and doing all these different things and when I first met them the last thing I thought they would be doing is being part of Learning 2.0 or being active on Twitter. Um, it It's a, one of those warm feelings of wow um, I don't know if I had that, if I had an impact in that happening or not, but I remember, uh, at least with Sonia, when she came to Yokohama International School, at that time I was using Twitter heavily, and I was trying to get this, everyone at the school to, to use it, but in a very, um, my style is not to pressure people, but to role model it and see its value in how I use it. And it's so cool to see that Sonia has her own tribe, she's a learning to leader, presenter, all these kind of things. And then it's even cooler to see her that she's going to Nanjing International School to be the PYP designer. So it's that it's how our paths sort of travel around and how we all are so connected and um, yeah, I get a warm fuzzy feeling when when you see that happening. Equally, it was great to see Nikki Hansen. We worked together in uh, Nanjing, and it's so cool that she's part of the Learning To organizing committee, and it was so neat to, to see her again. And again, more warm and fuzzy feelings. Um, maybe I don't see it, show it in my face, but in my body and everything in this video, I'm expressing that. The introvert is expressing that. I'm always having a conversation, how do you make Learning to better? And what I like about the Learning to conference is they're very good at taking feedback and moving forward with it. And one of the things that I think is really exciting with Learning 2.0 is there, every time they have a conference, there's more student involvement and my experience with technology and education, education technology, whatever you want to call it, is that when you get students involved and they're using it, that drives more change within the school than if you try to go exclusively through teachers. And so I see the most valued uh, experience I had was with the students teaching the classes. And I'm brainstorming and I'm thinking, well, how can you make the conference so that the students are also part of the conference? Could, you know, you have the students from Warsaw being part of the conference, but how do I bring students from my school or other people bring students from other schools and be part of the conference? Uh, the challenge is where do you host them? Where do you place them? Um, that's, I think that's the challenge because you have to have that supervision type of activity and so if you're going there as a participant and you're supervising you can't a hundred percent focus on the conference itself but then I was thinking of hackathons maybe it's maybe it's a derivative of learning 2.0 that is a it's a hackathon and it's not as it's it's more intense but shorter so it's a 24 hackathon and basically it's a big slumber party at the at the school and everyone's hanging out in the gym and you have midnight pizza coming in and you have a challenge so it's hackathon and it's like ed camp all together with uh, teachers and only 24 hours but that would be a very intense uh, learning experience that would be interesting. Just sort of a what if. Is that possible? 
and one of the other thing I've seen with um, our students, they connect with uh, you know ISTA, you know the drama festival where all they come they come together for drama activities, and there are robotics challenges, but I see it quite one that's a very thin layer type of experience. I'm thinking how can you create um, intramural activities around what all the things that we're doing with students and that's why I'm thinking like a L2 hackathon for students um, and again that would elevate the learning between all our schools and they would see value in all the type of integrations that we're trying to do in the schools and it'll just raise everything, raise the bar. I'm uh, excited to see that the next Learning 2.0 will be in Luxembourg. That's almost driving distance from where I am. Actually, it's probably driving distance for a lot of people. And I've heard people say, that, oh, they'll probably drive there because it's so close. I was thinking, well, what if you could turn that into an experience? Instead of individually driving, we get like a, like let's say a rock and roll style bus. that is called L2 and we're, we're all collaboratively being picked up by this bus and we're driving to L2 and we're just having this intense sort of learning experience as we travel to L2 and you take a bit of so sort of the idea of as you're traveling to L2 you're sharing that usually some people share that I do that share that through photos that that journey of getting to L2 but what if you did it as a this bus that is traveling through Europe picking up everyone going to the conference and it just it's it's hyper it's a hyper activity of uh, you know, you don't you don't try to make it as fast as you can to L2, but you're dropping off it. You stop by different places and you do some kind of, kind of interesting activity, a, a group forming activity, and you share it and you just keep on going and you finally get to L2 and there's a big celebration. Um, is that too crazy, or is that a viable idea? Hmm. On this conference, I stayed at. Airbnb and I did that actually when I was at Manila but Airbnb has introduced a new function within their system where you can book uh, Airbnbs as a business trip and I booked this one as a business trip and what's interesting is I got a voucher from them basically like $50 off on my next business trip I did with Airbnb but it got me thinking how cuz Airbnb is a disruptive technology just as Uber is a disruptive technology L2 is also a disruptive uh movement and how do you take these other disruptive movements and integrate them into L2 and it's kind of hard because if you do an Airbnb you have to do a lot of legwork of making sure that you know, there's always challenges when you first get there. There's a lot of risk taking to doing it. But what if uh, future L2s had deals with Airbnb that if you sign up with Airbnb, you had like a discount code and you use that code and it just cuts off some of the prices for uh, the conferences. The reason I say that is because I got that voucher and you know, I'd be curious if they would be open to that. And same with Uber. Can you imagine if you had discount codes for using Uber to get to wherever you needed to go? I mean, what other disruptive uh, movements are out there that are using technology and are really changing things? How could we integrate that into L2? I was thinking about the the unconferences uh, with learning two and the challenges I've seen is 
I think for people that that's the first time experience it is a fantastic experience but if you've ever been to an ed camp it doesn't feel as good as an elk uh, as an ed camp and I think we can make it better with learning to if we take some of the features and one of the features of a uh, unconference is that they're sort of mentally prepared that you're going to present something and then you actually in you start the things in the morning and you pitch your idea of what you're going to present to a big audience i'm thinking that that first meeting in the morning have some time dedicated to pitching your unconference idea and if you have a lot of people interested or a lot of topics then it's actually a sort of uh, opportunity to vote on what people value and th have those things booked into uh, different rooms and then the other thing I've seen with unconferences is uh, you want to design it so that it's very all the unconference sessions are happening in very close vicinity because how it works is if you don't like it you should just walk out and go to the next one and that's just the nature it's like a living Wikipedia that you don't you're not tied down to one thing this is joking about topic ideas and one other idea I think yeah I joke about it but I think it could be quite good is a napping on conference because uh, it's exhausting having the going through the conference and in the middle of the day I mean it's nice to take a nap but there's no place to really take a nap library won't work because if you snore you're just gonna make it noisy in there but wouldn't it be cool would you need to have a, a napping on conference or could you just schedule or set up a place where it'd be very easy to take a power nap in the middle of the day or whenever you're tired take a power nap get a little bit of rest and then you come back to your next session and you're fully en energized they had in Manila they had uh, you could get like a massage or something like that that was nice or you'd have an unconference of mindfulness or some sort of yoga session something different you need we need uh, other sessions that are not about learning it's about uh, exercise or, or going out and walking especially when the weather is really nice it'd be just nice to have an unconference that you go out walking often thought maybe you should have a cohort of photographers and we talk about how we share photography and all we do is we go around and we take photos of the conference.